sucked forcefully into an oil-coated 30-inch underwater pipeline at immense speed. These five men found themselves in an unimaginable waking nightmare, but only one of them would live to tell the tale. A GoPro camera mounted on one of the divers recorded the exact moment disaster struck. What it unveils will send shivers down your spine. On February 25th, 2022, at the Berth 6 platform in Pointe de Pierre, the men of LMCS, Faisal Kirbin, Kazim Ali Jr., Rishi Nagasar, Yusuf Henry, and Christopher Boudram were tasked with maintenance work on a dormant pipeline. The pipeline belonged to Perea Fuel Company, a government-owned oil company in Trinidad and Tobago. The pipe in question was a 30-inch U-shaped pipeline which runs along the seabed. It was designed to transport oil from Berth 6, where ships unload their oil, to Berth 5, the refinery. While some risk was involved, the five-person diving team were well-prepared and experienced divers. The team placed an air tube inside a diving bell, a unique habitat shaped like an eight-foot cube. The diving structure provided a dry workspace for the LMCS maintenance team. LMCS installed the cube structure over the pipe at berth 6 to displace the water inside the work area. The cube created a pressure pocket of air that forced out the ocean water to create an appropriate workspace. Once ready, this work area allowed the crew to remove their diving gear and safely use their tools to perform their essential work. Undoubtedly, they had completed the procedure hundreds of times. As the five veteran divers performed their duties, it was business as usual, until it wasn't. The company installed an inflatable plug two weeks earlier to protect the pipe's oil and prevent contamination. The line wasn't in service then, though it could be put into service when needed. The industry calls this dead legs, and it isn't without its risks. While this is standard procedure, the process requires intense planning, process hazard risk assessment, and close monitoring. Preparing for maintenance jobs like this can take days, if not longer. Unfortunately, this likely means the oil company wasn't willing to prepare for a safe operation. But like most employees, the five divers were following orders. The divers descended to their worksite, unaware of the surprise. As it turns out, Inflatable plugs like this are pressurized, holding back the high-pressure air in the diving bell and the low-pressure air in the pipe itself. These events created the formula for disaster. Once Ali Jr. handed a wrench to his crewmates in the diving bell, they began loosening the valve to release the plug. The five divers had no warning. As soon as they released the plug, the pressure difference turned the inside of the pipe into a relentless vortex, ruthlessly sucking in air, water, people, and equipment into its depths. The power of the suction was too strong, and a torrent of water surged into the diving bell, turning their sanctuary into a death trap. The sudden influx of water and pressure differential unleashed a force that yanked the men and their tools into the narrow pipeline. In the blink of an eye, they found themselves hurtling violently through a whirlpool of water and oil for an agonizing 90 seconds, fighting for oxygen. Suddenly, they came to a stop. They gathered themselves and assessed their positions in the pipe, realizing the gravity of their situation. They discovered that the violent tornado of water, air, and oil left them settled somewhere in the line where an air pocket allowed them to breathe. The sole survivor, Christopher Boudram, vividly recounts how it went down. A tornado, everything just spinning and beating you up and it happened so fast, I couldn't react. The only thing I remember able to do was cover my head, like in the, in the fetal position. After that, all I remember, I didn't even remember actually getting pulled in the pipe. I just remember going pulled through the pipe at unbelievable speeds. I can hold my breath no longer, man. Truth. When you're holding your breath for too long, after a while, your body, your lungs just fight. Yeah, your ears close, you just hear noise. <coughs> your body suffering to pull air. And 
unbelievable nightmare. Your eyes burning. Every time you try to open your eyes, it burning. Your pitch black, you can't see nothing. Your throat burning. Your ears ringing. Your body sore. And I, at that point, I, I tell myself I was going and dead. Their struggle for survival was only beginning. The men were trapped inside a 1,200 foot long oil pipe, disoriented, injured, and in absolute terror. Amidst this chaos and fear, the men tried to communicate and keep each other's spirits up. However, the reality of their situation squashed down any hope of survival. The GoPro that had been with them for the dive recorded every second of their plight, capturing the sheer terror and sounds of struggle as the men fought for their lives. Chris initially believed that they had been hurled through the pipe head first, so they had to crawl backward to make it out of the pipe. But Kazim, Yusuf, and Faisal were sure they had gone in foot first, so he trusted the judgment of the majority. As the least injured diver, Chris placed his feet on Kazim's shoulders. He then instructed Kazim to pull the rest of the group together and instructed Faisal to push everyone since he was at the back. Linked together as a chain, with Chris in front, they started trying to make it out of the pipe. Squeezing their way through thick, slippery oil residue in pitch black darkness was unbearable. Dealing with broken bones, burning eyes, a burning throat, and extreme discomfort weighed them down. Their progress was excruciatingly slow, and the end was nowhere in sight. The men kept praying and moving to the best of their abilities. They eventually came across two oxygen tanks with the regulators still attached. Chris informed the men that breathing the air inside the pipe could make them delirious and nauseous. He advised them to take small sips from the tank in intervals to keep clear oxygen in their system. Although they found oxygen tanks, water levels rose as they progressed. Christopher noticed that some group members struggled to breathe and suffered various injuries. Others were blocked and unable to move. He decided to check how much the water would rise if they continued. As he moved forward, Chris came to a horrifying discovery. The next segment of the pipe was entirely underwater, and with just two oxygen tanks for five individuals, it wasn't safe to proceed any further. Knowing this, Chris had to make the hardest decision of his life. He had to continue alone to get help for everyone. Chris prepared himself to tell the others. After explaining the situation to them, they agreed it was their only chance and gave Chris one of the oxygen tanks. Chris promised that he would get help and come back for them and left. Still not entirely sure if he was going in the right direction and how much air he had left in the tank, he swam through the submerged section with the tank in front of him, hoping he would find another air pocket soon. The entire pipe had flooded sections and some contained air pockets. After fighting to make his way underwater, he realized his oxygen was running out based on his air quality. With his diving instincts in overdrive, he breathed the last air in his tank. As if fate intervened, his tank collided with another metal object before him. It was another oxygen tank. He quickly tried to find the new tank's regulator. After scrambling in pitch black, he finally found it, but the regulator had no mouthpiece, so he pushed the whole thing in his mouth. His mouth was covered in oily sludge. He managed to take a relieved breath from the tank. He knew he couldn't stop and continued with all his strength, uncertain how long he could survive. As he clambered through the pipe, he finally entered another air pocket. Yet, instinctively, he knew his only escape was returning to the riser. Unfortunately, this section of the pipe was half full of water. He found another air tank and reached the last flooded section before the riser. At this time, he heard Faisal calling out his name. He had been following Chris. He asked Chris to wait before he entered the last flooded section, but Chris told him he couldn't wait any longer. They had been in the pipe too long and that their time was running out. He continued until he found the bend in the pipe that he hoped would lead to salvation. After what seemed like hours, this next decision would decide his fate. This was the moment of truth. Either this was birth five, which was sealed off by a plug, or this was birth six, where they came from. 
as he made up his mind for the third time to die, with one last push of determination, he kicked off towards the riser. As Chris continued to swim, he realized how tired he was, but he was determined to make it out and save his crew. Chris eventually reached the top of the pipe. Though he survived the ordeal, it wasn't over yet. As Christopher recounted the situation to the medical care staff, he recounted as many details as possible about the men and their position. Unfortunately, the rest of the LMCS team couldn't believe Christopher's story. The company assumed that the pipeline was full of oil and that any oxygen tanks they had would only give them an hour of air each. Rescue divers from the LMCS team dove down and knocked on the pipe, trying to find where the men were. They received the satisfying sounds of someone knocking back, undoubtedly providing the trapped men hope. But the LMCS team had yet to find a way to get them out. As the hours ticked by, the four injured divers suffered through their injuries, dealing with dwindling air, a curtain of suffocating oil fumes, rising seawater, and carbon dioxide. Though it seemed that Pariah Trading Company and LMCS would initially save the four men, a rescue never came. The company pulled the four remaining bodies days after the incident began. They performed autopsies, but no one could agree on when each man died. Officials decided they survived until Saturday, but some speculated that one endured until Monday. Officials launched a commission of inquiry in Trinidad and Tobago to investigate the circumstances that led to the Perea diving tragedy. Because everything inside my hope and I rescue for you. Everything inside me hope and I rescue was going on. Nobody was making an attempt to rescue me. I always somebody who doesn't know what's going on and I was always somebody who could control and, and and, 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 and see things through, and I feel, I feel like... Thank <laughs> you. 